Today I'm going to show you how to create quick reference guides. These are visual how-to instructional guides that you can create for your employees, your customers, your learners, anyone who you need to create step-by-step -step instructions and include screenshots or images. I'm going to show you several different real-life examples. These are sample layouts that I've created in Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. If you're interested in these samples, I'll include a link in the description below this video and you can purchase and download these. I'll show you how you can edit and customize them for your own needs. We'll also go over some editing tips and some quick reference guide writing instructions that will help you create your own quick reference guide. Let's get started. When you go to create your quick reference guide, the first thing you want to do is think through all of the steps that you want to capture and relay to your audience. And that will help you determine a layout. So if you want to use Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, you can use either a vertical or horizontal layout. So depending on how many images or screenshots you want to use, or if you need to include more instructional text, it's going to help you determine what type of layout that you might want to use. The next thing that you want to take under consideration is how to actually write the instructional text in your guide. Make sure that you are clear and concise and that you include all of the steps that your learner will need in order to complete the task. So don't just assume that they'll know how to do something intuitively. Be sure and include all of the steps that they need. I have another video that you can check out on business writing tips and there's a free download that you can get that will show you the proper grammar on how to write things like top left hand side of the screen. So just ways that you can be clear and accurate in the way that you write your technical guide or your knowledge base article. Now also included in this template, I have gone ahead and put together some icons for you to use. So as you're building a quick reference guide, a lot of times that you'll grab a screenshot and you want to circle something or highlight it or point to it with an arrow. Um, there's lots of different call out shapes, highlight shapes and navigational steps shapes that I've included here for you that you can just literally just copy and paste these into your document and use them however you want to and however you need to. And these are all shapes and icons that I've used in the quick reference guides that I've created that has been helpful to my users. So in this example, this is a quick reference guide that's a one page, it's done in Microsoft Word, and it's a horizontal layout. So if I zoom out here, you can see that it's just a one page, it has a grid, and it includes screenshots of the mobile app. And I'm explaining to my users um, how to clock in and out on this particular mobile app. And so here, what I did was I created the table in Microsoft Word, and then I went ahead and used the different boxes to merge some of those uh, some of those table cells together and then use those to go from step one down to two, three, four, and then a reminders. And so here you can see I've used some of my arrows and circles to help those users if they glance at this one page, they can see easily what they need to click on and what they need to do next. Now, if you purchase this template and you want to go ahead and edit it, notice the title up here is in the header of the document. So if I want to change that, I can just come up to insert, click on header, click on edit header. Then you can come up here and actually replace this heading here. You can replace this with the title of your quick reference guide and however you want to customize that. When you're done, you can close out and then you can actually come down here and edit. You can replace verbiage. You can use this as a sample layout for you to build your own. You can copy and paste into a new document. So that's a quick tip that I want to make sure to give you. If you do download these templates, make sure and save a copy that you'll use that you can always reference and then create another working copy that you can actually edit and customize off of. You can always reformat any of the icons in your quick reference guide. So you just simply select them. You can right click and click on format shape. This will open up the format shape area over here. So I can change the color of the arrows. So even if you download and use the red arrows, if you want to change those to a different color, you can simply come over here and change those. You can make them thicker by changing the width. You can change the um, begin and end arrow types. And so the end arrow type, if you wanted it to be a different style, you could select that and it will look a little different. If you want to add a drop shadow to things, you can come over here and drop shadow and click on your presets and then click outer and it adds a shadow. Um, if you do want to, you can also um, change 
and shorten or lengthen your um, shapes here. And you can always drag and move these arrows in different parts of your document. So you can move these around with your mouse or with the arrows on your keyboard to place them where you need to. And so you can do that with those arrows. You can do it with the circles, same kind of thing. You just have to select it. Once you have your format shape window over here on the right, you can change and format these to any color with any other uh, formatting effects that you want to make on these different shapes and call out icons. All right, let's take a look at the next sample layout that's included. And this is going to be a multi-page horizontal Word document. So if I zoom out of here, you can see on this one, um, it has more instructional text than the other layout that we just take that we just looked at. And so for this one, we are showing our supervisors how to approve time, and it's a weekly checklist of things that they need to do in order to get their time approved and fixed up and just right for the payroll. So for example, we're going to be highlighting different parts of this document for those supervisors. So if they want to print this out, it's going to quickly draw their attention to what they need to do. So every Monday, it tells them where they need to navigate and what they need to click on. So you're giving them the instructions on what they need to do, as well as then showing them and numbering those steps of what they need to click on so that they can quickly glance and see what they need to do. Um, as you scroll down, there are some areas here that we include checkboxes instead of screenshots to give them those instructions to make this a little more of a checklist type item for them. And then it gives them some instructions on what they need to do and even some tips at the end of how they can adjust some configurations or personalize their views and make it easier for them to do their weekly checklist. All right, let's take a look at a vertical layout for a quick reference guide. So here's an example of a, of a vertical layout, and this is for something that might have quite a few more steps that you want to relay or include in your document. And so there's still a grid to this one. And so notice that we've included a table here and we outline the steps over here on the left. And then we include the instructions over here on the right. Again, this is designed so that users can easily glance at this and figure out what they need to do and logically see the next steps. After they've completed one step, they can go to the next and accomplish what they need to. Um, you can include your instructions up here at the top, a paragraph of instructions or welcome information, and then include any call outs and tips and things that you want to emphasize. Um, you can use different icons and different fonts and formats to do that. And so here again, we're using some of those icons and just placing them where we want to show people what to click on and emphasizing with those screenshots what they need to do. And so down here, we've gone and shown them a couple of different pieces of information as an example. And you can see that it goes onto multiple pages, but we do keep the same table format so that people can easily see the different steps that they need to do um, for this particular quick reference guide. Now the final Word document quick reference guide that we have is one that it doesn't include that table. So it's more of a free form. And this is a good format that you could use if you were writing a knowledge base article or had a little bit more text or information that you wanted to just write and include. And so here we've just taken advantage of the different styles and headings uh, that we can input into Microsoft Word. And uh, we've included some steps here uh, as, along with the screenshots and the, the call out arrows and icons, um, but then we also have another section. So you could actually create kind of a knowledge base article type of technical documentation that you want to capture in this type of a format. And so then if you even wanted to include a table of contents, you, you're using these different style headers, you'd be able to easily do that and put a table of contents at the beginning if this were a more lengthy technical documentation guide for someone. All right, let's take a look at our PowerPoint template. And here we've got, I've got two layouts for you to use as well as um, here in PowerPoint are the same icons and call out templates as I included in Microsoft Word, just to make it easy for you that you can just literally grab these, copy and paste them uh, wherever you need to on top of your screenshots and or images that are included in your guide. And so here in this example, I've got 
a four-step uh, visual guide as well as a six-step visual guide. So these are just examples that you can use of formats that are helpful if you have some simple steps and you might want to use more uh, call-outs, more imagery, and more visuals to your instructions. It's sometimes easier to use PowerPoint than Microsoft Word when you are actually creating a lot of emphasis or designs on top of your images. So here in this example, um, you know, I went ahead and changed the color of these arrows again because we want it to stand out and red on this particular screenshot didn't really stand out. So I changed it to a bright yellow and just make it easy for your users to see and see the steps that you're trying to explain to them how to do. Notice these highlighted areas. So those are shapes that I can move these around and I wanted to highlight this area. And so if I wanted to expand this or make it bigger, um, this is just one of those highlight icons that I grabbed and pasted here and I can modify that. Now I have that sitting on top of this image. And so um, one of the things that you're gonna wanna do once you have created your quick reference guide in either Word or PowerPoint is to save your document as a PDF file type. This will flatten everything and make it so that um, you don't have to necessarily group and um, worry about all the grouping and wrap text items that you might need to do if you were going to keep the format in PowerPoint or Word. So as an example, if I right click here on this, um, I can always bring it to front or send it to back. And so, you know, if you are playing around with these uh, items and you paste a screenshot on top of an arrow, but you want the arrow to be in front um, or the highlight to be in front, you can simply right click and say bring to front and this will keep it in front. Whereas if I had it behind, if I send it back, you won't see it because it's behind my screenshot there. So I'm going to go back and right click. I'm gonna, well, I clicked the screenshot, so I'm gonna say send that to the back, and it'll bring my highlighted item back. So if you save this as a PowerPoint when you're all done, um, you won't have to worry about other users accidentally moving things around on your document. So just, uh, it'll flatten it and save it for you as a PDF. Now to save a particular slide as a PDF, I'm gonna come up to File, and I'm gonna click on Print. And I'm going to drop down my printer selection and I'm going to say print to PDF. And here I can say just my current slide and click on print. I can save it on my desktop and then I can come to my desktop and open it up. And once you have that PDF, whether it's a Word or a PowerPoint that you've saved to PDF, you can post this out for your users on a shared drive or wherever you need to distribute it. You can email it out as an attachment and you can send it to them so that they can use it. If you found this video helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up to like it. You can subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Be sure and visit my website, SharonSmithHR.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.